I caveat all of this by saying I am not a professional leathersmith. I do, in fact, like to dabble in the craft. I have looked up a few book holsters on the interwebs and found a few that I like. However, I was born with the I can do that myself gene and I don't know how to turn it off. So here we are. Hello friends and welcome back to another video. Halloween has come and gone and I'm feeling a little low about it, but the benefit is that here in Central Florida, we roll straight into Ren Fair season. There are probably a dozen Ren Fairs, medieval festivals, pirate festivals between now and like March, April. So there is still plenty to do and plenty to think about and plenty of to be excited for. But just, you know, as Halloween ended, I just kind of felt this little like, <clears throat> does anybody else feel that way? I don't know. So I think to kind of get me out of my post Halloween blues, I want to start getting excited about this year's Ren Fairs. So one of the things that I absolutely love doing when I'm at the fair is called Dice Nice Adventures. If you don't know what it is, I will link them down below. They are a phenomenal group of human beings, elves, dwarves, gnomes. I think there's a dragon or two, wizards, you name it. So essentially if LARPing and D&D &D merged, you go on these adventures and you, you know, you gain hierarchy the same way you do in D&D &D and you get to create your character, you know, but it's running around, it's getting to know other fairgoers. It's a very fun way to be a part of your community and get to know your community while dressed up and having fun and, you know, you're more of a participant in the fair than an observer. Observer? You're more of a participant in the fair than an observer. And it's amazing. However, I have a really hard time of kind of keeping track of some of the different adventures that I'm on. And so when I get back to the guild hall, I'm like, I don't know what I did. So last year I created a little leather journal that I could keep with me and jot down the different adventures that I was on. So when I returned to the guild hall, we could be like, these are the things we did up to and including, we had a pirate who made us do the chicken dance. We had a cake seller who made us waltz. Oh, um, the soap lady had us do leapfrog, play leapfrog. Mm -hmm. Uh, a gypsy had us deliver a handwritten note to a goat. So, you know, there's always something different. So one of the things I was thinking is I could add to my garb by making a book holster. It is something that I have wanted for a really, really long time. Simply because book holder, hold, holder, book holster. Mostly because a book holster is something that I have really wanted for a long time, but I also think this is a really great opportunity to custom make it to fit the journal and have that hanging from the hip region always at hand, I think will be fun. Now, I am not a leathersmith by any means. I do, however, like to dabble in leather crafts. So in the past, we have purchased these scrap bags. Normally they run $5. Um, I happen to score a couple of them for a buck 24. And there's scraps in here. There's oftentimes pieces of belts. And so for little projects of the dabbling nature, these are perfect. I genuinely don't want to go out and buy a hunk of leather that was specifically designed for crafting. I love where these remnants 
are repurposed. Like these are things that are already getting used in other areas. Oops. But like, they're not, they're not big. You can tell, like they're not big, they're uneven. There's no rhyme or reason to them. But for like this kind of project, like this got, who knows what that was from? Like that was, a lot of times these are like saddle makers, purse makers, that kind of thing. And instead of all of their scraps and remnants ending up in waste, they get put into these little remnant bins, which I feel like that's an ideal way of utilizing a natural product. I know there are a lot of people out there who prefer using vegan products and I'm not going to debate that whether it's appropriate or not. However, I tend to lean more towards natural products, things that are found in nature. I don't like things that are made out of plastic personally, if I can avoid it, but I do choose to utilize it in an eco-friendly, eco-friendly way in which the whole product is being utilized, not just a portion of it and the rest of it's being thrown out, if that makes sense. So, I found a couple of book holsters online, different vendors on Etsy have a few, but I was born with the I can do that gene and I don't know how to turn that off. So, here we are. So the first thing that I have to do is actually sort through these pile of scraps that was in this bag. There are a lot of shapes and sizes, but ultimately my goal is to find one that is big enough to like wrap that like that. I'll trim it down, shape it up. And then I need to find ones that match because they're not all the same color. I don't know if you guys see on camera that doesn't really show that they're different colors, but like some of them are more of a cognac, some of them are more of a chestnut. On camera, they're all showing up identical though. That's a good example. In addition to finding like the primary base one, I also need to figure out which one I'm going to use as straps so that I can hang it from my belt like that. I also need straps that'll go around it to hold everything in place. And so I was kind of thinking then if I took one of these little tinier scraps and put it on the front as like a quill holder, I think that'd be cool. But I gotta figure out how to do it so that the buckles won't all get in the way. But I think these are the two that I'm gonna use because they match and they're good sizes. For the body, a quill holder on the front. And then I think this one is a good color match for straps. Hopefully that's enough. I mean, there's a lot, this bag, these bags have a lot of scraps in them. Like you can even see like this is a very strange shape. Who knows what that was for. So in addition to the bag of leather scraps, I also got um, one inch little tiny buckles. They were originally $2.99 by jewelry shop and they were on sale for 74 cents. And then I also got um, 5.8 millimeter rivets. I mean, and I do also have all of the traditional stuff like adhesives and thread and all that. But I think we can do this. I think what I'm going to do before I cut into my scraps, because my scrap sizes are precious and I don't want to be wasteful, I am going to make a mock-up out of paper or craft foam. What follows is a brief mock-up of that.
Okay, so here are my cuts. For the body, I need a four and three quarters by one by 21 and three quarters. For the quill pouch, I need a two by four. For the belt loops, I need two one by 12s. For the buckle straps, I need four half inch by nine. And then for the straps that will hold the buckles in place, I need two half inch by six. I'm just trying to utilize as much of this scrap of leather as possible, and so even if my dimensions aren't perfect, it's good enough. Alright. That gives me 21 and 3 quarters. Yay! scrap that I actually had after my body scrap was only 11 inches long and so that just means that my straps that hang from the belt are going to be a little bit shorter. I've got a upholstery thread in my sewing machine. I've also got a leather needle in my sewing machine. And I have my stitch length set to a 3.5. And I'm going to sew these together. I actually wasn't sure if my sewing machine would be able to, but I did a test run. This is with a 2.5 stitch length. This is with 3.5 stitch length. I'm actually going to bump it up to a 4 and see how that looks. And then that is the 4.0 stitch length. You know, I actually think I'm going to go with the 4.0 stitch length. I feel like that looks really good. And then I think the hardest part here is going to be getting these to stay. Because I can't pin. Alright, so wonder clips aren't long enough. Huh? I think I'm just going to tape it. these straps were a little long and I ended up trimming them down by about three quarters of an inch. And then they will fit right here with a slight loop big enough for the belt straps to go through. But instead of sewing these in place, I think I'm going to put a little bit of glue and rivet these in place. To create the support tabs, I put a little dot at the top and the bottom and the middle with a sharpie just so that I knew where I was working to find the dead center of my pouch front and my strap. I folded both in half and then lined those half pieces up and then I inserted my rivets by cutting holes with my leather punch. And then these rivets are actually quite easy to work with. You just put them into the holes, snap the back in place, and then hammer them and it locks. To make the little mini belts, I took the straps, cut little holes in them with my hole punch, and inserted them into the belt buckles. 
Then I reinforced the end tabs with just a little bit of a glue and then I put a rivet in the center of the tab going through both layers to reinforce it, partially to give it a little bit of decorative and partially for structure. And then lining the other side of my belt pieces up, I am making holes every one inch just so they look like real belts. I also think I want to round it. To figure out where I want to attach these back straps, I'm going to hold my buckle on the front really tightly, and then I'm going to run a bead of leather cement. Bloop. Right there. Oh, too much. Too much, too much. That's all right. I'm going to use all the excess here. Real official. binder clip to hold them and then doing the same thing for the bottom one all right and then I'm going to leave this to dry okay I have got this where it is pretty much assembled and done I'm really happy with it but I feel like it's not quite there the one thing that in my head I feel like it's missing is a little bit of a distress and so I am going to go in and do a little distress painting. I hope I don't ruin this. To distress the book holster I am going in with a little tiny dollop of burnt umber and black and by a little bit I genuinely mean a little bit. I am wiping off 90% of what is on my brush and so I am doing just a dry brush on the areas that would potentially collect a lot of dirt which is like increases and high touch points. I'm also then going back over it with a paper towel to rub off any excess so that it looks as natural as possible. This is genuinely my favorite part of making these kinds of crafts. When I take something that is brand spanking new and distress it so that it looks as old as I feel. Okay guys, I'm gonna let this dry and then I will see you in the reveal.
friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me today for this quick and easy one day build that cost me under $5. I, and it's real leather, so I am so stoked at how easy this ended up being. I am really glad that I made my mock-up with the foam because it behaves very similarly to real leather. And I didn't have any anxiety over it fitting properly or not. I am so stoked with how this came out. See you. Hopefully I'll see you guys at the fair.